Welcome to a new series where we're kicking off making some predictions for the 2021 NHL season. As we go along getting ready for the beginning of the year, we're going to be making some predictions on what we know so far. And we're getting started with the All-Canadian Divisions. I'll give you my thoughts on what the standings will be at the end of the year, coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to be making some predictions. We do this every year heading into the new NHL season. As of right now, we're still waiting for the final details to be confirmed and the NHL players and owners to vote on this and everything to be ratified, uh, which we're hoping will be done here sometime in the next couple of days. And we're hoping that the 2021 NHL season will begin uh, somewhere around the middle of January with training camps getting started at the end of December 1st of January in that time frame. So, of course, we don't have 100% confirmation until it's announced exactly what the divisions will be. But we do know one, and that's the fact that we're going to have an all-Canadian division. We know that for certainty due to the border issues because of the pandemic. And we've also heard enough comments from all the NHL insiders pretty well as well as even Gary Bettman and Bill Daly himself. So we know that much for sure. The seven Canadian teams will be playing in the same division, and then we're going to make some predictions today on how these teams are going to finish. We're expecting a 56-game schedule, so let's get right into it here. We're going to kick things off with the team I feel will finish last place in the All-Canadian Division, and that is the Ottawa Senators. Now, the Ottawa Senators I expect to be a lot better than last year. Now, anybody who's been following this channel for any length of time uh, likely knows that they are the team I cheer for. So, obviously, I like to see them do much better, but I do think they're going to make some big strides. They made a lot of moves this offseason, and I do expect them to be better, but I do think that all the other Canadian teams are ahead of them in their progression and where they're at right now. We've seen teams like the Leafs and the Oilers, uh, you know, really be fortunate with draft lottery and some high picks here a few years back, and they are already progressed much further ahead. We've seen teams like Vancouver draft well, and they're further ahead of schedule. And, of course, we've seen the other teams like Montreal and Calgary and Winnipeg. They're, you know, it's fair to say they're all really, at this point, further ahead and stronger than the Senators. Now, at some point, that could change, and the Sens have a ton of great prospects here, and they added a lot of great pieces this offseason. But I do still see them finishing in last place. I mean, they have a new goaltender, Matt Murray. We'll see if he can bounce back to his Stanley Cup form when he was playing for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Of course, they added some pretty interesting forwards. I mean, a guy like Evgeny Dodonov should provide some much-needed offense for them. Uh, obviously, they've added some other pieces as well, including Alex Galchenyuk. Uh, we've got Josh Brown on the blue line. Of course, we have another veteran forward in Austin Watson. And, of course, we can't forget top prospect number three overall at the draft this year, Tim Stutzla from Germany, who's expected to jump in and make a big splash here right away as well. So as much as I do expect the sense to be a fair bit better, I do expect some good progress to be made. I don't expect them to be the worst team in the NHL uh, by any means. I mean, the uh, the standings for the whole league-wide is going to be tougher to measure this year, given that we're not going to have play outside of the team's division. Uh, that is going to be challenging and really fair to say who really is the worst overall. But I would say that they're not going to be in that position, that they're going to move up the ranks here at least a little bit but still have their work cut out for them each night playing a tougher Canadian team. Now, next up, this might not be a very popular choice amongst a lot of people watching this channel, and you may disagree with me, but the number six team I'm putting is the Vancouver Canucks. And I'm sorry to say that, but I see Vancouver taking some big steps back this year, but I can see them in a year or two time taking some big leaps forward yet again and getting back to what we saw last year. But they lost a lot. They were really depleted this offseason. And I'm just, I am just I have some concerns over this team for the coming season. Of course, they lost their all-star starting goaltender, Jacob Markstrom. They had some losses on the blue line, including Chris Tanev. Uh, they lost some in the forward position, including Tyler Toffoli, who they were really hoping to re-sign. They lost Josh Levo. Of course, they're, most of these players all ended up in Calgary. Of course, Toffoli ended up in Montreal. So they're going to be playing against their former teammates uh, a fair bit of time here, but uh, given the fact they brought in Braden Holtby as a goaltender, uh, Holtby's numbers the last couple of years haven't been great, um, so I have concerns that way. I mean, Demko may be more than capable of stepping up and uh, you know and taking on a, a bigger role, playing more games, and getting them to what uh, they could be better than what I have them pegged for. But I have concerns that Demko can provide that kind of play over the long term. I mean, yes, he had some amazing playoff games at the end of their season last year. But can he do that for a full season? He hasn't done it before, so until he does it, it's hard to have that confidence. Uh, but I do think he's a terrific young goalie and has a really bright future. 
And maybe if his game is where it was in the playoffs, that could be all the difference here. But I see the goaltending situation being weaker than it was last year. You could probably make an argument that the blue line's not quite as strong either. They did lose Chris Tanev as well as Troy Stetcher. Now, I do like the addition of Nate Schmidt. I think he's an excellent addition back there. I do expect Quinn Hughes to continue getting better. Uh, you know, can Tyler Myers be, you know, that real strength back there? I'm not sure. So I, I the blue line's not going to be terribly worse next year, but I can see there maybe being... A small step backwards overall, um, but it's really hard to say. It really boils down to how some of the younger defensemen progress. Um, but there are some concerns there too. And then up front, you know, obviously they have some terrific hockey players like Elise Pedersen, JT Miller, Bo Horvat, Brock Besser. Uh, but you know, they're going to need some younger players to continue taking big steps forward as well, like Adam Gaudet, for example, Jake Vertanen. Can they keep that up? Can Tyler Mott play as good or better as he was in the playoffs? He seemed to find a consistent role. So I do expect this team to still be fun and exciting. I think they're going to win a lot of hockey games. And I would not be surprised at all if at the end of the year I look back on this video and find that they proved me wrong and finished higher in the standings. But I think most people would agree that the Canucks likely do take a, a bit, at least a bit of a step back this year. And then hopefully uh, as their young players continue to develop and they add even more exciting prospects in this team in the next one or two years that they're going to take some giant leaps forward and then really be more serious at that point, especially if Demko is ready to be the star starting goal turner that we think he could turn out to be. Now, next up here at number five, I've got the Winnipeg Jets. The, the Jets are going to be in tough a lot of nights as well. Uh, they're going to be reliant on Connor Hellebuck a lot like they were last year. So depending on how Hellebuck plays will largely dictate how well they do. I mean, if he can play anywhere close to what he did last year, then they're going to be in games more often than not and have a chance to win. I do think their special teams need to continue to be pretty good. The Jets do rely on power play a lot. Uh, they could improve their 5-on-5 five -five scoring, and hopefully that'll happen with Paul Stastny being the number two center uh, and hopefully playing and igniting uh, Patrick Laine. Will they give Laine first line minutes? That's tough to say. And if not, if he plays with Stastny again, can they reignite that Laine, Ehlers, Stastny, you know, strong magic that they had in, in that brief period of time that he was there before? Uh, that will certainly be... Remain to be seen. They'll have a full year of Dylan DeMello in the lineup. He played really well for them. So I think the Jets are going to make some steps forward here a little bit. And if we would have been reverting back to what the divisions normally were, I'd say they would have had a better shot at being a playoff team. But I think when they're looking at teams in front of them, like the Calgary Flames, Edmonton Oilers, Leafs, the Habs, I think they're going to have a tough time. And, you know, they still have not replaced everything they lost in that blue line. The blue lines, you know, might be a little bit better than last year, but it's not drastically better. I have concerns of how, of Hellebuck can duplicate last year. If he can, great. And I do. I think he's a great goalie, and that potential is there. Uh, but they really need a breakthrough in the forward group as well to increase their overall scoring and scoring in more situations. So uh, I think they're a good team. I really like the Jets. I just think they're going to be in tough against some of these other teams. And I don't think they can do much better than fifth place the way this division stacked up here. Next up on number four, I've got the Calgary Flames. Now, I know some people seem to be higher on the Flames, but to me, I'm not entirely convinced just yet. They did make some changes here, but the main one being in goal, with Jacob Markstrom being their big free agent signing. But I have concerns here. Can Markstrom continue to play in Calgary the way he did in Vancouver? I mean, I guess only time will tell. I mean, we saw Sergei Bobrovsky go from a Vezina Trophy winning goaltender, having playoff success for the very first time in Columbus, then signing a mega contract with Florida, and look at how he did last year. I mean, unfortunately, we see some players get their big contract, and then the play goes down. So I guess we will see just how bad he wants to win and how much he can keep up his game. I mean, he's not old by any means, but he's not young either. So we'll see if his prime years are you know, still the current time right now, or are they starting to get behind him a little bit? They paid him a lot of money, and I'm, uh, you know, in a way, I think Vancouver did the right thing as much as they want to keep him. I think that they just couldn't commit that much time on the term and that much dollars to keep him in the fold. So uh, Markstrom's a great goalie, but I have concerns that he can keep up that play, and that to me is, is a concern. I mean, I hope he plays for Calgary the way he did in Vancouver, and all will be great, and maybe they'll do a little bit better. But I also have concerns over the you know like the core of that team. I mean, this is slowly becoming Matthew Kachuk's team. I don't see a long-term future there for Johnny Gaudreau, but we will see. I mean, the Flames blue line, you know, they, they're losing some veterans. They're not going to have TJ Brody and uh, Travis Hamannick back there. They have some young defensemen, though, that are capable of taking on a bigger role. But, of course, like a guy like Valimaki missed last year, so we'll see, you know, what, what he can bring. Can he be uh, the same kind of... 
you know, veteran presence that we saw back there, like a TJ Brody. Like, you know, it's, it's going to be a different feel on the blue line. And up front, they really didn't do anything too drastic. They added a couple of depth pieces, like a Josh Levo, for example, uh, Dominic Simon. But I'm not really convinced that the forward group is a lot better. And I'm not really convinced that they're going to have, you know, a, a ton of success. I mean, goaltending in the blue line is where we saw the most change. But at the end of the day, we got the same group of players and up front that just haven't gotten it done. I mean, when we get to the playoffs, it's a whole different beast, I understand. But I think they're going to have a tough time against some of the teams I have ranked ahead of them. And I think the best they can do is fourth. But it does get them into a playoff spot, which could certainly make things interesting. You get into the playoffs and you get a hot goal or something, is to say anything can happen. Now, next up at the third place spot, I've got the Montreal Canadiens. Now, the Habs had a really good offseason. They made a lot of good moves. And I think that they're definitely going to get themselves in a position here where they can be a playoff team in this division. I'm not convinced they can go higher than third, though. But I do think they're, again, another team that could surprise me. I think a lot of these teams, they, they made a lot of interesting moves. There was a lot of change within the Canadian teams. And the Habs were certainly right at the forefront of that. I mean, obviously adding a really solid, experienced backup goalie in Jake Allen. Mark Bergevin went out and addressed that need. Uh, so between he and Carey Price, I think goaltending is going to get even better. I mean, Price should theoretically play at his absolute best, given the fact he'll get more rest and have that, you know, uh, you know, ability to take more nights off. So that'll help. And, of course, Jake played pretty well, uh, you know, at the end of his time there in St. Louis. He certainly was an up-and-down kind of guy. But overall, I think when he can be the backup and not have too much pressure, he can be a terrific backup, one of the better ones across the NHL. So I think that's a good fit there. We saw them make the defense a little bit bigger and harder to play against by adding Joel Evanson. They're going to have an exciting young rookie, Alexander Romanov. In the forward group, by adding Toffoli and Anderson, certainly adds more depth scoring, makes them a bigger, stronger team with the addition of Anderson, especially having that big, strong winger who's at 30-goal potential. I, I do have some concerns on the contract, and I hope it works out. That was a big-time commitment for a guy who's battled some injuries and didn't play much last year. So I, I hope that... That doesn't come back to bite them. But I really like Josh Anderson, and I think he'll be a great fit for what the Habs really need. So I see them going up as high as third place. Now, at the second spot, I've got the other big Canadian team here in the big market, and that's the Maple Leafs of Toronto. Uh, I think they've made some decent moves as well to get better, mostly on the blue line, of course. They have some interesting additions in the forward group. Leadership is going to be stronger. Uh, we'll see how Freddie Anderson does. I expect Freddie Anderson to be motivated as hell because, you know, he had a ton of rumors surrounding him in the offseason. Would he be back? Would he be traded? He's playing for a contract because his contract's expiring. So I think we're going to see Freddie Anderson at the top of his game, and I don't expect that to be an issue. I mean, can the defenseman they added be the difference to make them harder to play against and shut other teams down is a big question mark. Obviously, we saw them add... T.J. Brody, Zach Bogosian, we got Miko Lettinen coming over from Europe, who looks to be a really pretty solid, exciting defenseman. I think he's going to be a good addition and probably play more than people realize. You already got Riley and Muzzin there from before, so I think this blue line for the Leafs is going to be. I know I'm not sure if it's completely where it needs to be, but it's going to be the best we've seen it in a while. That's that we can say that much for sure. I think. Uh, so it's going to be better. Up front, you get some great veterans like Wayne Simmons, Joe Thornton. Yes, you know what? They're past their prime, but they still have a ton of leadership, and they can play a much smaller role like we saw with Jason Spetz last year, and I think they can thrive in that. But the one area I would have liked to have seen is to add more toughness. Now, you can say, yes, they added Wayne Simmons. They did, but they also did not bring back Kyle Clifford, and that's largely due to the cap. They just could not afford it. Uh, so I'd like to see them have a little bit more grit in that bottom six. I mean, when you think of Jason Spencer, Joe Thornton, Jimmy VC, you don't really think of grit. So, I mean, I think they need to be tougher to play against. That leadership is going to be a great asset to them. Don't get me wrong. I really like the moves. I would just like to see a little bit more toughness in the lineup. And they, they do have a little bit more in the back end, which is good. And we will see, is it enough is the big question. When they get deeper into the season, they're fighting for the playoffs and they go into the playoffs. Will that be enough? I mean, I guess only time will tell. But no matter what, they have a ton of firepower. The blue line's better. I think we're going to have a good season from Freddie Anderson playing for a contract. So I see them doing extremely well in the regular season. The playoffs are a whole other animal, and we'll get to that in due time once we have some NHL action to compare to here and base our predictions on. So obviously, by process of elimination, you can see I'm picking the Edmonton Oilers to finish first. They were probably... You know, arguably one of the better regular season teams for the Canadian teams last year, and I think we're going to do it again. 
I mean, the goaltending was suspect in the playoffs, but this is not the playoffs. This is the regular season. I could say the same thing about some of these other teams here about their playoff performances, but at the end of the day, this is a regular season prediction. So for the Oilers last year, their goaltending wasn't too bad. Solid season. They're going to outscore many of their issues, and they're going to get a lot of victories in the regular season. It's just that simple. When you get two of the top players in the league and McDavid and Drysaddle, they added a, a really solid number three center, in my opinion, Kyle Turris. I think he's going to thrive in that role. And then obviously in the, on the blue line, you got Tyson Berry. Uh, you know, he'll play the role basically of Oscar Kleffbaum because he's going to be out all year. You're going to see some interesting other guys in the lineup, some young players for the Oilers continue to get better as well. Obviously we saw, you know, Drysaddle's, uh, you know, friend from Germany, Dominic Cahoon, join the team. We got another full year of Kaylor Yamamoto. You get some blue line uh, prospects like Broberg or um, or Evan Bouchard who could jump in the lineup. You get Ethan Bear, Caleb Jones, another year, another you know more experience. Darnell Nurse taking more steps forward. I think this team is going to be tougher to play against and be able to score their way to a lot of victories. And now when we get to the playoffs, though, I I don't know. We'll have to see because I do have concerns mostly between the pipes. But I think for regular season play, I think the Oilers could win this division and be a force to be reckoned with all season long. And certainly, in my opinion, when you have McDavid and Drysaddle 1-2, that's a really tough combo to bet against. And I just think they're going to outscore their opponents more often than not. So, of course, these are just predictions, just for fun, just my thoughts. I'd love to know what you think as well, so let me know down in the comments. Feel free to tell me if you think it's going to turn out completely differently. There's no hard feelings here. It's just fun hockey discussion. So let me know what you think, and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. Stay tuned for plenty more predictions as we learn more and get more confirmed details about the 2021 NHL season. We'll be putting out more of these videos, predicting more things that we think will happen this coming year. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.